Uh, next speaker is Professor Camille Clear from Lehigh University, and he's going to talk on high resolution XPS. I wanted to contribute to the symposium on our involved patients, uh, but I didn't have any IR or Raman or for that matter vibrational spectroscopy to speak about. Uh, and so I uh, talked to the uh, organizers and they said that XPS would do, uh, but uh, not because it's XPS, because you are the colleague of uh, Bob Aishens is at Lehigh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to make a claim that XPS is superior uh, to, for the characterization of surface species. Uh, my students uh, come back uh, to me with catalysts that we are using often with a statement that the catalysts are too dark or there are interfering bands, <coughs> and uh, that precludes some uh, IR uh, uh, or vibrational spectroscopy. So that might be the case uh, uh, for uh, photoelectron spectroscopy. And uh, the co-author of this uh, paper is Mary Johansson. Uh, we want to analyze surface uh, acidity uh, for the reason that I'm going to show on the next slide immediately. Uh, we want to quantitatively determine Bronsted and Lewis acid sites stoichiometric relations between the source of the site and the base that titrates it. Uh, uh, we want to assess, uh, like many other people, acid strength and then correlate the acidity with catalysis. Uh, uh, the motivation for this and for the kind of catalysis is something that uh, is shown on this slide. Uh, we uh, can synthesize a mixture of higher alcohols uh, which can be dehydratively coupled to ethers or dehydrated to hydrocarbons over acid catalysts. We've been involved in year, for years in this area of catalysis, and now, as a relative novice, I was forced by this chemistry to move into acid catalysis. So we're using solid acids. If we take uh, just a look at isobutanol and methanol, which are dominant products in the previous synthesis, there are a number of reactions that, that can occur. Uh, the isobutanol can dehydrate to isobutene selectively without touching methanol, and the selective catalyst for that reaction is uh, sulfate zirconia, or um, isobutanol can couple with methanol to methyl isobutyl ether. The selective catalyst for that is an H, uh, so, uh, fluorocarbon sulfonic acid, and if we use the shape selectivity of side pockets of H. modernite, we're getting selectively dimethyl ether without touching isobutanol, even though that isobutanol has access to the large channels. So the protons that, that are located in those ch large channels are quickly poisoned, and it's only the protons in the side channels that catalyze this reaction selectively. All of these reactions occur at fairly low temperatures. I'm talking about temperatures <coughs> of, certainly of, of, over the polymers below 180 degrees, or uh, most commonly 150 degrees centigrade, and so on, and uh, rarely above, uh, even on inorganic catalysts, uh, rarely above 200 degrees centigrade. Uh, it is also evident uh, in this catalysis that MTBE, metal tertiary butyl ether, which is one of the desirable products of that coupling reaction, has to go via dehydration of isobutanol first, then carbenium reaction that gives rise to, uh, by standard technology, to MTBE, and not by the direct coupling of those two methanol, which gives you the wrong isomer. The uh, characterization of acid sites uh, to determine whether it's Bronsted or Lewis acid sites that are active in this reaction. Uh, can utilize the photoelectron spectroscopy. And I think this is a pioneering paper by DeFoss and Canesson, which uh, said if you observe a uh, photo, uh, binding energy nitrogen one as shift of, uh, in this case, 0.8 electron volts, that we can make these assignments. Further work uh, by various authors leads to, led to a, a similar, this is a pyridine adsorption, and the nitrogen one S is in pyridine. And uh, this was assigned, therefore, to pyridinium cation. I will show uh, shortly that it is fairly close to uh, the uh, value. Uh, uh, however, uh, later uh, there was a confusion in the assignments uh, that is apparent uh, from this history. And uh, uh, in principle, uh, the lower binding energies were assigned to these uh, sites and the uh, higher binding energies to Bronsted sites. Uh, uh, all of this uh, is based on a correlation 
that uh, is due to the Swedish group around uh, uh, Kai Ziegbarn. I will refer to this paper as Norberg, uh, or Norberg et al., which uh, uh, relates uh, binding energy of a nitrogen containing compounds, nitrogen A1S, uh, to a charge that resides on the nitrogen. This charge was calculated from falling electronegativity and corrected uh, uh, to delocaliz for delocalization by molecular orbital calculations. In some cases, uh, these compounds, which are off the core, incidentally, this charge is an effective correlation parameter. And uh, if you dig deeper into the photoelectric effect, you will find that initial as well as final states contribute to this uh, correlation. These uh, compounds, which are off, are strange compounds that, like uh, sodium azide and sodium nitrite, which have uh, resonant, uh, resonance with them by most organic molecules, particularly pyridine itself and pyridinium cation, fall on the correlation. And similar uh, correlation, uh, correlation exists uh, for the sulfur, uh, which is a source uh, in the sulfonic resins and sulfur <coughs> zirconia of uh, both the Lewis and the proton and the Ronsted acidity. And these are the two systems that we're concentrating in. And we can express uh, the core level XP sh XPS shift from our previous graphs in limited region so that if we can measure the uh, binding energies to within 0.05 electron volts with high resolution, it's claimed at least by Al Miller in our lab that you can do it to within 0.02 EV, then the charge changes on, of charges on the order of 10 to minus two electron charge are detectable, and therefore you can not only clearly distinguish between the Brosted and Lewis acidity, but you can also tune in on whether a Lewis, given a Lewis acid is a stronger or weaker Lewis acid. And, uh, we are not uh, involved in catalysis of hydrocarbon isomerizations, but rather dehydrations of alcohols of olefins, as I mentioned, to olefins and mixed ethers. Uh, the uh, high resolution instrument provides uh, a uh, uh, high flux. Uh, uh, the aluminum X-rays are monochromatized. The sample is located in a chamber such that uh, all specimens are introduced without, accent, without, uh, without exposure to an uh, environment other than chemical molecules. And the analyzer uh, has a uh, resolution that far surpass, uh, surpasses that of the monochromatized aluminum beam. Everything is referenced uh, to bulk signals. Uh, in case of zirconia, uh, uh, the bulk uh, zirconium signal and oxygen signal and surface species uh, occur as uh, shifts uh, and uh, new, uh, uh, new emissions uh, in um, uh, different regions. Uh, if we look at the, uh, uh, at the various uh, Bronsted and uh, this, uh, Bronsted Lewis acids, or in this case, actually, uh, the Lewis acidity is so weak that uh, we assign the spiridine bindings to nitrogen in an atheon, uh, an atheon H, uh, we assign this actually to more or less physically, but stronger than physically absorbed uh, pyridine to the uh, fluorocarbon backbone. This is definitely in the region where you saw the pyridinum cation on the correlation graph of Nordberg et al. At that point, uh, that, that point was at 401.5, I believe this is 401. Six. So I think the assignment of pyridinium is reasonable and saying that this natheon is a, 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 a predominantly bronsted acid uh, with some uh, chemisort uh, or physisort uh, pyridine is also reasonable. Uh, I'm not going to go into details of quantitation which depends uh, on uh, extensive calibration uh, within uh, the community as well as the instrument but I'm going to show some results. If one takes uh, just that bronsted acid peak of uh, the Natheon H and looks at the pyridine nitrogen to the sul sulfur in the SO3H group, one finds the stoichiometric equivalent 0 0.97, what that means that the pyridine is one-to-one -one bonded into, onto this bronsted acid and that physisop pyridine was extra. In the, uh, in the zirconias, which are sulfated, if we, prior to sul sulfation, uh, take the cal calcined uh, zirconia, we can look into the OH region and calibrate the, uh, look at the concentration of OH versus zirconium. The stoichiometric equivalence is one to one approximately, meaning that 
every surface atom, this is a surface zirconium, uh, that every surface atom on the uh, calcite at high temperature zirconia is hydroxylated. These hydroxyls are removed upon the sulfation, uh, the sulfation uh, process uh, such that they are replaced, uh, but not completely by sulfate groups. Uh, only not uh, every zirconium is covered by a sulfate, uh, but uh, about uh, one half to two thirds are. What that means that uh, some of the sulfates will be uh, bidentate bonded to two different zirconiums, some will be simply bonded to one zirconium. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, if we look at the equivalence of oxygens extraneous to the lattice oxygen, the sulfur, we find approximately the right stoichiometric composition of the sulfate groups without these hydroxyls that were there before. What that means that the sulfation has re replaced uh, the hydroxyls. Uh, if we now look at the Bronsted versus uh, Lewis acidity on the sulfated zirconias, uh, we'll, we'll find, we find a distribution such uh, that uh, there are Bronsted acids, uh, there are also Lewis acid. This is not merely physisop pyridine that was here, and uh, that uh, the ratio <coughs> is uh, after this, uh, these particular treatments, which involve calcination at 600 degrees centigrade give rise to significant portion of bronsted acidity, acidity, about uh, one third of uh, the total acidity titratable by pyridine. If we now look by XPS uh, at that uh, reaction between uh, the sulfate groups, uh, which uh, giving rise to bronsted acids must have protons on them, and use the same procedure for the calculation of charges uh, that Nordberg, uh, Nordberg Nordberg et al. used, uh, uh, we uh, calculate that the pyridine, uh, upon acceptance of proton, it changes its uh, slightly negative to a lot positive charge, and the sulfur, due to the indirect effect of uh, being ionized negative, loses a little bit of uh, positive charge on the sulfur. These changes are sufficient to predict uh, that the nitrogen shift will be three and a half electron volts upon that reaction, and the shift in sulfur, which is not directly affected only through the indirect transfer of proton and uh, this negative charge here, will be 0.5 EV. Now what is observed actually is uh, 3.5 for nitrogen and 0.3 negative uh, change in binding energy, meaning that when the positive charge appeared more on the, on the nitrogen than the sulfur positive charge went down and the two binding energy changes went in opposite directions. So these are the Bronsted acid, uh, acid centers and I uh, want to tell you that these are in our uh, catalytic reaction uh, the only ones uh, that are actually catalytically active. Uh, but uh, when one looks and sees a catalyst with Lewis acid centers, one is tempted to identify what these Lewis centers are. And I have done similar calculations uh, on the nitrogen shifts uh, um, between uh, model uh, Lewis centers in which nitrogen is bonded directly to the zirconium that once has the ionized sulfate groups on it and uh, another time has an OH group. In each case, uh, there is a, due to a similar effect uh, of the negative charge here, uh, there's a shift uh, predicted of binding energy of the nitrogen down in the Lewis acid this time acidity. All of this uh, put together creates a scale, which uh, and there's an experimental scale and there's a calculated scale. The calculated scale is based on reference pyridine, so these two scales agree here. The pyridinium calculated and the pyridinium on an atheon and pyridinium on sulfated zirconia are in nearly the same position, so these are the Bronsted acids. The Lewis acids, the calculations actually over predict, based on those charges, over predict uh, the binding energy of the Lewis acids uh, observed and under predict the shift uh, that is due to sulfation. There is a large shift uh, due to sulfation. So what that, what that would mean in these calculations uh, uh, should be corrected is that the, actually the, uh, the Lewis acid sites are weaker than predicted, 
and the charge transfer in that Lewis acid center is greater than predicted. Uh, but uh, again, uh, we do not observe catalytic activity associated with any of these Lewis acid centers. Simply, when we take the unsulfated zirconia, it does not have any bronsted acid, and it's totally inactive. Uh, the Lewis acid centers that are only sulfated zirconia are actually weaker than on unsulfated zirconia, and so all the activity is carried by the bronsted acidity. It is in interesting that the bronsted acidity uh, comprises only a fraction of the sulfate groups, and that fraction hardly depends on the calcination temperature, as if this strong acid uh, were giving off these protons to the environment and stays only 12 to 17 percent uh, protonated, no matter what we do to the system. And this is closely connected with the fact that uh, actually these bursted acid centers are not generated uh, by subsequent treatment on, on the sulfated zirconia, by sub subsequent treatment by water from the Lewis acid centers. The bursted acid centers are at the same concentration uh, based on this uh, analysis, and also the water neither poisons nor promotes these acid-catalyzed reactions uh, on uh, these uh, uh, sulfated zirconia. So. Uh, the reason why uh, the sulfated zirconia is a selective catalyst for isobutene in the mixture of methanol and isobutanol and hardly to the mixed ethers, uh, while uh, the natheol is a, a catalyst uh, for <coughs> mixed ether and IEBE is connected with two aspects of the bronsted acidity. Number one is the naifion has much greater concentration. Remember that we had only 12 to 17 percent of bronsted acid centers on those sulfated zirconia. So, and we have 100 percent of uh, sulfated groups being bronsted acid on the naifion. Aside from that, uh, the sulfate concentration uh, and the sulfur concentration of nitrogen is greater. The reaction that gives rise to the mixed ether requires is a dual site reaction, one site that is source of the iso isobutyl group, the other that is a methyl group, so these two sulfate groups have to come together and form the mixed ether on that uh, catalyst, which has denser, uh, denser, uh, denser bronsted acids. Uh, aside from that, uh, this catalyst works at much lower temperatures than the sulfated zirconia, and that uh, indicates that these bronsted acid centers are utilized more efficiently. And uh, I have a picture on uh, the mechanism of that reaction, which is hardly anything to do with uh, XPS or otherwise uh, uh, characterization. Uh, we've uh, done chiral uh, catalysis here, uh, that is using chiral alcohol such as 2-pentanol uh, with ethanol coupling to find out what's this, uh, what, what this uh, reaction mechanism on the bronsted acid like. Uh, well, uh, the, uh, there is a considerable amount of, of inversion of the chirality of this carbon upon the formation of the ether. And uh, that is uh, 80% over the Nathion H, and it's exactly the same value as when we run the reaction in solution. What that means is it's a concerted SN2 reaction. This is the activated by the Bronsted acid. This is the activated OH group of the alcohol, of the first alcohol, and this is the uh, second alcohol that, in the case of Nathion, uh, comes actually from a parked space. Kinetics uh, analysis indicated for parked space, which supplies it. Uh, to, for this reaction. Interestingly, um, we, we assign some of these features to rigidity versus flexibility of the catalyst. Uh, if the catalyst is flexible, that is a solution or an on H polymer, then the selectivity for this inversion is lower than on a rigid catalyst such as, that is uh, less active admittedly, but uh, uh, more rigid catalysts uh, where the inversion mechanism, the SN2 mechanism, is 97% of all of that. Um, so uh, basically, comparing uh, these two catalytic systems, and uh, we have compared a very large class of inorganic as well as organic catalysts, uh, we're coming to the conclusion that these alcohol reactions are solely bronsted acid catalyzed, uh, that the bronsted uh, acid centers are 
more concentrated and stronger on the nation that the zirconia does have bronze centers which are not controllable by water. They are self-adjusted uh, to this uh, 12 to 17 percent concentration. That might have some advantages. And the, the dilution of those bronze acid centers also indicates uh, the uh, uh, why uh, the uh, selectivity to the mixed ether of the sulfate in zirconia is low and why it prefers to be a selective dehydration catalyst for dehydration of isobutanol to isobutene rather than making these mixed ethers. Let me use a few minutes uh, for what we have done so far. We've characterized by XPS the core level shifts and that is a relatively old business and we uh, certainly can enhance the impact of that by using a higher resolution and be more and more precise in calibrations and so on. But I see a potential in valence band uh, XPS spectroscopy, and I will show you two slides uh, where that potential can be materialized for uh, characterization of soft species or even of reactions, admittedly not of fleeting intermediates. Um, uh, uh, Piro et al. has uh, shown that uh, in the valence band region, uh, Hydrocarbons with uh, one carbon, two carbons, three carbons, four carbons uh, respond uh, to the photo, photo emission process, which involves uh, both the initial and the final states, uh, as if uh, these were molecular orbitals bonding and antibonding, bonding, uh, and, and so on. And uh, these uh, carbon 2s uh, uh, inner valence orbital shifts are monumental. Uh, in the carbon-hydrogen region, uh, the situation is more complicated, but nevertheless interpretable. I'm pointing out that these carbon uh, peaks occur between 18, uh, let's say for small molecules, between 18 and higher binding energy, 18 EV and higher binding energy. So, and in this, uh, here is a difference between XPS uh, photoelectron spectroscopy and vibration spectroscopy. This probes the valence band spectroscopy probes into the electronic nature of uh, things. Uh, so uh, that is where uh, we can look at the adsorbate and where we could also look at the catalyst. Uh, in this case, I can't show you uh, the uh, zirconia because this uh, requires some model work on single crystals, but I'm going to show you what you do see in the valence band region, let's say of molybdenum disulfide. And uh, there was a talk about molybdenum disulfide acid centers and HDN and HDS uh, reactions and so on. We have the outer valence band and inner valence band. And remember that the, uh, that the carbon, carbon region starts here. Uh, in the outer valence band of the compound, such as molybdenum disulfide, this top of the valence band peak corresponds to a mixture of uh, the molybdenum DZ squared and the dxy dy uh, square minus s x squared orbitals uh, and uh, the bottom originates from sulfur 3p this is a sulfur 3s band it is all based uh, on various uh, uh, interpretations including those of angle resolved uh, ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy what we have done here for the first time on a single crystal of the molybdenum disulfide we looked at the angle resolved uh, uh, spectra, you see that the positions of the peaks are in the same same place, but the intensities vary, vary as we change this angle here. But when we, for instance, hit uh, the angle of 49 degrees that uh, connects molybdenum with the sulfur, we get a forward focusing peak, here shown on the molybdenum 3D core level emission and weaker in the molybdenum 4D Z squared. If uh, we do the same thing with the with the sulfur, with the bottom of the valence band, we still, still see the same distribution. So one phenomenon that we observe here is geometry. We see forward focusing. But another remarkable phenomenon is that the 4D background here, as opposed to the 3D background, is changing. And the shape of that background resembles the shape of the dz squared function here. And the reason for that is that the 3D orbitals are preoccupied. <coughs> There's a 3D10 configuration, 
an attendee electrons behave as a spherical system, whereas if we have dominant uh, dz squared orbital, that behaves as highly non-spherical system. So we are now <coughs> moving in uh, the, the identification of these orbitals in terms of uh, mixture and the coefficient of the mixture between the dz squared and xy and xy uh, x squared minus y squared which increases like this which provides for this background instead of node here is uh, uh, calculated from an experiment here to be 1.5 and tested against the theory at various levels. Um, now when we do the carbon and carbon nitrogen and carbon fluorine <coughs> carbon sulfur and molybdenum carbon etc uh, spectroscopy we can get uh, the detailed uh, information about the binding let me summarize here uh, what I have tried to demonstrate uh, I think uh, this would be repetitive but uh, here is the, the conclusion about the potential I've not demonstrated anything specific uh, about the the nature of SO3H groups on, uh, on, uh, on SO4H on the zirconia, unless we have a well-defined system that is a, that's a flat and single crystal system. But there is a potential for determination of uh, the nature of the bonding and, uh, and also the charges in the valence band region. And uh, in the catalysis, uh, uh, we have already gone through this conclusion. That concludes my talk, and uh, I apologize for taking two minutes from your time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do we have any quick question? One quick question. Yes. The ratio when you get approximately 0.1 for the Bronsted acid over sulfate was that total sulfate or just surface? That was a total uh, sulfonic uh, group on an atheon. The natheon is a fluorocarbon backbone, yeah, no. and the SO3H groups, that was a total sulfur on the natheon. So that is all the sulfur that is accessible to, uh, all the sulfur is accessible to pyridine. So the 0.1 ratio of acid? Oh, uh, 0.1 ratio on sulfated zirconia was uh, to, uh, the, uh, to the sulfur as determined by XPS spectroscopy also. Okay.